In this video, we're going to talk about public versus private IP version 4 addresses. So let's start off talking about public IP addresses. So when IP version 4 was originally designed, all of the different addresses that we looked at, the class A, the class B, and the class C addresses, those were designed to be public IP addresses that were registered to be used out on the internet. However, as you can imagine, based upon that design where we have class A addresses where there's not that many to give out, but each one has 16.7 million addresses, and class B where, again, there's a lot to give out, but each one is roughly 65,000 addresses, and then class C where there is a ton to give out, but each one is only 254 addresses. Well, as you can imagine with that design, by the early 1990s, they were already running out of public IP addresses. Now, the one thing to note, public versus private, public IP addresses are routable on the internet. Private IP addresses are unroutable on the internet. And the other thing is that private IP addresses, which we'll talk a bit more about later on in this lecture, is that they're unregistered and anybody can use them. So the thing is, is with that original classful design for class A, B, and C, is that you had to register for those addresses. And if they ran out, well, they ran out. There's no more to give out to you. And it was an initial design error. They didn't really think that they would run out at the time because we're talking about the 1980s. And it might have been in the late 1970s. In terms of 2 to the power of 32, that's billions of addresses. And as you can imagine, the amount of devices that utilize networks and the amount of devices that were on the internet at the time is minuscule compared to now. And so what they ended up doing with that public address space, the so class A, class B, and class C, is they took a subset of those addresses within those specific classes and they denoted them, they defined them as private IP addresses. And a private IP address is an unregistered address that's free for anybody to use. But here's the caveat. They cannot be routed on a public network. So when internet service providers set up their routers, they set them up so they do not forward routes for anything that comes from a private IP address because they're not supposed to be used out on public networks. They're designed to be used only within an organization's private internal network. And they use something that is called NAT, which is Network Address Translation, which allows us to have private IP addresses on our internal network. And at our router slash NAT device, we have a single public IP address or we have multiple different public IP addresses. So they allow us to map private IP addresses to public IP addresses. And typically within a home environment and a small office environment with a Soho device, NAT is enabled and configured by default. And we're using, a majority of us are using a class C 192.168 private network that utilizes network address translation, specifically port address translation that allows us to gain access to the internet with either one or maybe a handful of public IP addresses. And within our terminal network, we can use as many private IP addresses as we need. So let's take a look at what these are. So in terms of the different ranges that were defined later on as a referendum to the original design, they did class A, class B, and class C, and they defined specific ranges of addresses to be utilized only as private IP addresses. So they defined a single class A network. So 10.0.0.0 to 10.255.255.255. This is a single private A class network. But as you can imagine, we get 16.7 million addresses on that single private network. So as you can imagine, this probably isn't used that often. For class B, they defined a total of 16 private class B networks. And this is a range here, 172.16.0.0 to 172.31.255.255. And of course, it's the standard size. These are all going to be the standard size. So roughly 65,000 IP addresses for the class B 
And then for the Class C, there are a total of 256 private Class C networks. So 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. And the Class C is going to be the one that most of us are going to be familiar with because if we're configuring anything on our internal network at home, we're often going to see a 192.168.0 network or 192.168.1 or something very similar to that. And of course, it's going to be 254 IP addresses per network. Now, here's the great thing about private IP addresses. So I can be using a 192.168.0.0 network at my house within my home and everybody else on my street could be using that same exact private IP address as well on their internal network. But so long as we are all using some form of network address translation, so NAT, and the reason I say some form because there's several different types of NAT, that this NAT is going to take this internal address and is going to convert it to a public address. So that allows us to let's say for example i have maybe roughly 20 devices in my home and they all have an ip address well in the old days each single device would have to have a public address but now i only have to have one so this solves a lot of our issues with running out of ip addresses specifically public ip addresses however it's not a long-term solution it was never designed to be a long-term solution the implementation of private ip addresses and the implementation of network address translation, they were designed to be a bit of a short-term fix. And IP version 6 has actually been around for a very long time. And even though it's been around for a long time, because we have network address translation and because we have private IP addresses, IP version 4 is still commonly used. You may see something that's called a dual stack configuration where on your systems at home, you may see an IP version 6 and an IP version 4 address. That means that your system is configured to use either or. So you can communicate with devices that are only utilizing IP version 6 and vice versa devices that are only using IP version 4. So the big question is, is when will we eventually stop to use IP version 4? And I don't have an answer to that because a lot of networks still use IP version 4. IP version 6 is gaining a bit of momentum, especially on wide area networks with internet service providers. But internal networks like my home network and a lot of small and medium businesses and even in large governmental organizations, they're still thinking about making that transition. And some of them are slowly making that transition while other ones aren't. So we really just have to wait and see what happens. But that's why I really wanted to spend a fair amount of time talking about IP version 4 because I honestly don't think it's going anywhere for the next several years. I think that we're going to see these dual stack implementations of IP version 4 and IP version 6. And it may be another decade before we fully transition out of IP version 4 into a full IP version 6 network. So anyways, that's going to conclude our introduction to public versus private IP version 4 addresses. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.